Hi there. This one is dedicated to my late grandmother, Nana Pacito, who I like to refer to as my typical Italian grandmother. She was short, plump, religious. She kept the house immaculate and she cooked like a dream. Whenever she made her lasagna, people would come running for it. And to this day, I will never order Italian with pasta when I go out to eat because it could never compare with her pasta sauce. Um, every Italian family has their own secret recipe for pasta sauce, and this one is ours. If Nana could see this today, I think she would have loved the idea of her pasta sauce being seen by people around the world. <laughs> as far as Italian pasta sauces go, this one is very simple. Um, it's really nothing more than bringing the ingredients together in a large pot and slow cooking it for several hours. There are two differences between uh, this recipe and a typical American-style pasta sauce. First, we're using pork as the main ingredient in the sauce rather than ground beef, although the meatballs are made with ground beef. And also, we're not frying or cooking the meat in advance before adding it to the sauce. Nana always preferred to add the meatballs, the sausage, and the pork to the pot in the very beginning and slow cook it for several hours. And this is a method of poaching the meat rather than uh, frying it by simmering it long and slow. And it's one reason why this dish is so easy. And I hope you'll want to give this a try. The secret ingredient in this sauce is Italian sweet sausage. Nana always bought her sausage at the store, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you really want to go kick this up a notch, take the time and make your own homemade sweet sausage. It's just a matter of grinding a pound of pork shoulder, then mixing in the spices. And while store-bought sausage is good, homemade sausage is simply better. The scent of this has to be experienced for you to understand that. Once the sausage is ready, we simply roll the sausage into meatballs and keep it in the refrigerator until it's ready to add to the sauce. Any kid will tell you there can never be too many meatballs in spaghetti sauce. This recipe uses two pounds of ground beef with some eggs, breadcrumbs, and Parmesan cheese mixed in to give your meatballs a little extra flavor. Once again, it's okay to cheat and use store-bought meatballs, but doing it yourself will give this dish a little extra that you can't get at the store. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. My poor meatball. I lost my poor meatball. When somebody sneezed. When somebody sneezed. It rolled off the table. It rolled off the table. And onto the floor. And onto the floor. And then my poor meatball. And then my poor meatball. Rolled out of the door. Rolled out of the door. It rolled in the garden. It rolled in the garden. And under a bush. And under a the final preparations are to slice and mince about four cloves of garlic, then slice a pound of country-style pork ribs into medium-sized pieces. The hard part is now finished, and even that wasn't hard at all. It's time to begin preparing the sauce. This may not be the world's easiest pasta sauce, but it's almost certainly in the same ballpark. We start by frying up the minced garlic in the biggest pot we can get. Once the garlic is ground, 
add in four cans of crushed tomatoes. We then mix in basic seasonings for the sauce. Nana measured her seasonings by palmfuls rather than with a measuring spoon, so don't be afraid to adjust the seasonings to your taste. Even though we love mushrooms in our family, Nana rarely added mushrooms to her sauce. Of course, there's no reason for you not to add any extra ingredients you want to suit the sauce to your taste. I'm just trying to present this recipe as my grandmother made it. Once the spices are mixed in, we add the sliced pork, sausages, and the meatballs to the sauce and stir it all together. We cover the pot and gently let it simmer on low to medium heat for two hours. After two hours, we uncover the pot and let it simmer for another hour to reduce the liquid and thicken the sauce. And that's all there is to it. After three hours of cooking, Nana's pasta sauce is ready. Nana's 100th birthday was in August of 2016, and even though she passed on in 2010, she's still remembered with love, and so is her pasta sauce. I hope you enjoy this recipe, and thank you for watching.